St. Francis wanted to go home for Christmas. Not to Assisi, where he'd been born and raised, for Francis knew that that world was forever past and lost to him, and now God's little poor man was on the road all the time, preaching and teaching with the friars who were his companions. Oh, but Francis still longed for a Christmas gathering, with grandparents and grandchildren gathered around the table for a meal, gathered around the fire for warmth and stories. He remembered all of that from his time, his childhood in Assisi long ago. But Francis could not go back to the past, and Assisi was no longer the childhood home of his memories. But if there was any place that was most home to Francis, it was the little town of Reccio, halfway between Assisi and Rome. Reccio was tucked high up in the mountains and surrounded by thick forests. And the people of Reccio were simple and honest and full of love for Francis. Now in Reccio, there was a nobleman. His name was Count Giovanni. He was a wealthy, generous, and just man who owned the mountain, the forest, and the valley below. And he was a close friend of Francis. And so Francis asked him if he would help him to prepare for a different kind of Christmas this year. When Giovanni was honored, of course he would have a great feast for Francis on Christmas Eve. But then Giovanni heard the details of Francis' request. Francis said, Giovanni, would you prepare one of your stables for the celebration of Mass on Christmas Eve? And Francis asked, Giovanni, would you bring live animals into the barn for the liturgy? And Francis asked, would you invite the shepherds and woodcutters and farmers from the village of Reccio to the Mass? And finally, Francis asked, would you prepare a feeding trough with clean hay and put it next to the altar? Now, in those days, Christmas had always been a most solemn and serious event, done with great pomp. So Giovanni wondered, he scratched his head, saying, how could Francis want people to come to an old stable to celebrate Christmas? But when Francis and some of his friars arrived the day before Christmas Eve, they found that Count Giovanni's servants had made everything ready. Francis went deep into the forest to pray. And Giovanni returned to his castle and with his wife and children, eagerly prepared for Christmas Eve. That night, Count Giovanni and his wife, the Countess, stood outside of their castle tower. They looked over the valley. It was a harsh landscape. Not many important people passed that way, but it was their home. And all the farmers and woodcutters and shepherds were good neighbors, and the count and his countess. And it seemed like the whole valley, the whole mountainside, belonged to one great, big, happy family. Well, the day was short, and the, cloud was, the, the sky was filled with dark clouds, and as the lights faded, snow began to fall. Large flakes drifting down like snowflakes, like feathers in the cold night air. And suddenly, the Count and Countess saw dozens and dozens of lights, torches burning brightly, helped by the shepherds and woodcutters and farmers making their way to the stable from all corners of the valley. And the Countess said, Oh, the Magi saw only one star, but we see hundreds of stars burning brightly in everyone's heart tonight as they make their way to our stable. I am so glad that we're not in some palace in Rome tonight. I am glad we are home. That night, Francis, who was a deacon, preached and sang at Mass. He preached and sang in the stable. He spoke of Jesus the God of glory, who humbled himself to be born of a poor peasant woman in a stable. He spoke of the King of glory. Come to the shepherds, come to the poor, come to all who open their hearts to him. Now when the mass was over, everyone's eyes turned toward the procession that was leading from the stable up to the castle. And everyone's thoughts turned toward the great feast that the count and countess had prepared. 
and everyone's eyes turned away from the altar and the manger. But then Count Giovanni turned and looked at the manger again. And this is what he saw. Now whether others saw what he saw, he did not know, but this is what he saw. He saw a little baby asleep on the bed of hay in that feeding trough. And he saw Francis step toward the feeding trough and reach in and gently awaken the sleeping child. Giovanni said, ah, my friend Francesco is awakening the Christ child asleep in each of us tonight, the child that has been asleep for so many years. And Giovanni knew that Christmas would no longer be solemn and serious. It would now be simple and tender. Francis and his friars shared a feast in Giovanni's castle that night. The rich and the poor were all there. The poor woodsmen in their rags, the count in his finery, all grandparents and little children. There were many differences that night, but the differences did not matter. Francis knew he was home for Christmas. And now, every year, Fra Count Giovanni and his family prepare a manger in their hearts. They empty their hearts of all anger and desire, and they open their hearts to the Christ child. And there, in our hearts, the Christ child rests until he awakens with us on Christmas morning. In that region, there were shepherds. In that, in that time, in those days, all ah, right, in those days, <laughs> a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own homes and be registered. Joseph, too, went from his home in Nazareth of Galilee, to the city of David in the province of Judea called Bethlehem, because he was in the house and family and line of David. He went with Mary to be registered, Mary with whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Now there were in that region shepherds living in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. The angel said, do not be afraid. For see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they got up in haste and went and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And they told everyone what had been told to them about this child. All who heard it, were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, oh, Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart, in her heart. The shepherds went on their way, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as it had been told them. <laughs> 